In a way, we're all psychologists. We look at the people around us and we ask ourselves, why are they acting that way? That, my friend, is attribution, and there's a particular mistake that we usually make when we do it. In psychology, we use the word attribution to mean how we explain other people's behavior. In other words, when we see someone do something, what do we attribute that behavior to? And importantly, psychologists have drawn a line between two types of attribution. On the one hand, there's the dispositional attribution, or sometimes called an internal attribution. However you terminologize it, this is just when you take someone's behavior and say that the reason it happened is something about that person. Something in that person's disposition, their personality, their beliefs, their opinions, something about their own set of quirks and traits drove that behavior, caused that behavior. On the other hand, there's the situational attribution, or external attribution. And when you make one of these, what you're basically saying is that someone else did what they did, not because of something about them, but because of something about the situation that they were in. Something about the environment, the people around them, the circumstances, any of those things are what caused the behavior ultimately, and not necessarily it being of their own volition. Okay, so what does this look like in the real world? Well, imagine you're at the grocery store and you go up to someone, hopefully someone who works there, and you ask a very simple question. Where are the pickles? And the person just looks at you and rolls their eyes and drearily points down the aisle to where the pickles are at the other end. Now, you could explain this person's snotty response in a couple ways. One, you could say, this is just a real jerk of a person, and I don't think that he's any good at anything, right? That would be a dispositional attribution. You're saying something about that guy and his poor personality and people skills made him react that way. But you could also ask yourself, well, maybe something is going on in this guy's life. Maybe he's distracted. Maybe something horrible just happened, and he's not really in the mood to have a pickle conversation with a stranger today. That would be a situational or external attribution. It's not that this person is a rude guy. It's that something else provoked this response that maybe under other circumstances he would have acted differently. The thing is, even though we have both of these explanations available, we tend to overwhelmingly assume that people's behavior reflects something about them. In other words, we use dispositional attributions all the time, even when a situational attribution might be more appropriate. This is what's called a fundamental attribution error. The fundamental attribution error. And it means that we overlook the possibility that people's behaviors are shaped by their circumstances. We'd rather assume that people do what they do because it is reflective of something about them, rather than coming from something more external. We know this is true because a lot of studies have shown it to be the case. For example, one classic study in the 1960s gave a bunch of people an essay to read, and that essay was either arguing in favor of Fidel Castro or arguing against Fidel Castro. And everyone in the study's job was to guess the author of the essay's true opinion. In other words, the person who wrote this essay, what does he really think? Now, sometimes people were told that the author got to choose which position to take. And not surprisingly, when this is the case, people assume that the author of a pro-Castro essay must be pretty pro-Castro, and the author of an anti-Castro essay is pretty anti-Castro. Not a crazy thing to believe. But where things get more interesting is in the other condition, where the participants were told that the author of this essay had no choice over which position to take. He was literally told he had to write either a pro or an anti-Castro essay. And so rationally, you would take this information and think, well, the essay gives me no information about this person. There's nothing here that I could use to make a judgment about the person's real opinion. And yet, even in this case, people still assumed that when the essay was pro-Castro, that the person writing it must actually be pretty pro-Castro. And when the essay was anti-Castro, the author must have been pretty anti-Castro. The idea here is that even though there was a clear situational explanation for why the author took a particular position, people were still inclined to say that it was driven by something about his real opinions, something about his true personality. 
So why does this even happen? Well, people have given a lot of different reasons for this, but one that I think makes a lot of sense is the idea that situations are invisible. We see people, we see what they do, but we don't often see the circumstance. We don't see the situational pressures. For example, imagine a man walking through heavy wind. There's a clear situational explanation for why he's walking so weird. It's the wind. But we can't see the wind, necessarily. And in the same way when people are actually influenced by the situations that they're in, we have trouble seeing that influence. So, there you go. Fundamental attribution error in a nutshell. I have to say, this is one of those topics in social psychology that I think has made me a better person. It's one of those things where when you know we make these kinds of mistakes and errors when we judge other people, it can make you more understanding and open to the fact that people's behavior is driven by all sorts of things, not just the kind of person they are, but the circumstances that they find themselves in. And I think if we can teach ourselves to be open to situational attributions, it might make the world a more understanding place. For more social psychology, subscribe to this YouTube channel or go to beapeopleexpert.com and find new articles every week about psychological science.